So this is going to be what's called a coil vase. It's a lot more complicated. So it's going to take a couple steps. And this is where I often have to make changes and fix stuff along the way. In fact, this is the second time running this video because I botched the first one so far that by the time I had fixed it, it had undone so much stuff that I figured I'd start over again. So this can be frustrating, but the results are really cool. So I'm going to start a sketch on the top surface. And we just need to simply need a cylinder. I'm going to mention this thing to 2.5 inches, a little smaller because we're going to be extending it out anyway. And then I'm going to shift E extrude, or I could click the button, obviously, uh, make it five inches tall. Uh, two inches tall. So I now have a cylinder. Oh, I forgot to tell it who. There we go. Now I have a cylinder. Now we're going to start a sketch on the bottom. And this is, there's a couple places that we can cause problems. So I'm trying to give you the best possible chance of success. I'm going to take, and I'm going to draw an abstract shape with my spline tool. Now I'm going to make it kind of look like a shark fin. I'm going to start it here. And now I can take my control points. I can move them around some. And that looks kind of cool. Now I need this to be a closed shape all by itself because that's going to help us later. I also want to make sure that the part that really matters is the part that sticks out from the material. So we now have a shape starting uh, at on one side of this drawing. I'm going to move this so I can see it. We now need to create a coil that goes around this. That's going to be our path this is going to follow. I'm going to grab the coil tool. I'm going to create on the outside of this face. I want to make sure I do very few turns. So uh, a quarter or less. So a quarter turn, so it's going to be just a little bit. And we need to make change the starting point so it starts at our piece, which looks like our start of the opposite side. So we're going to start at 180 degrees. And if we're good, the coil should start inside of our part, which it does. So now we're going to take, and you'll call it's called a sweep. A sweep takes a some shape and follows along a path. So we're going to grab the sweep tool. I'm going to grab both the top and bottom of this fin. And I'm going to select my sweep path to be this coil. I now have a nice sort of fin shape, but I want a lot of those because one of those is kind of boring. So we're going to do a couple things. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some fillets to make it so it's a little smoother, more joined up to my body. And now we're going to use our circular pattern tool. Now here's where I got in trouble last time. So when we circle pattern, we need to select all the important geometry. So let's go to pattern. It might look like this. We're going to pick circular pattern. And the first question is who? And we want to make sure we're using a feature pattern. I want the sketch to the helix, the sweep, and the fillet. And the pat the axis is going to be the center of our jug. And we have red, which is bad. So the question is, why is it angry? Apply for instance, apparently it's our checkbox. And I can do like seven, let's do six of them. Uh, let's do nine of them. That looks cool. So before I go any further, I want to make sure that the bottom of my thing has a sort of round surface. So we want to fill it that just like before. I'm going to select the entire object. And I'm going to pick a small number because right now this is probably too tight. Hit tab to sort of have it update. This can take a second. That looks good. It solved it. 
And now we need to just hollow this thing out. So the last step here is we're going to shelf. And we're going to set our thickness to 0 0.05. Okay, so we're seeing red lines. Let's shrink the size down a little more. All right, I'm going to delete the face. Let's try reselecting it. Let's see if it's killed. It did not. So there could be a couple things causing problems. It could be that this thickness is too small, but I'm going to try. I'm going to hit. X, let's try shelling it again. So point oh one. And let's see if it no. Nope. Alright. So I'm guessing that the problem is that these fins are too thin. So I'm gonna go back to my initial sketch. My sketch two. And we're going to make this a little bit wider. So I'm going to pull this this way. I'll pull this this way. Oh, yes, I'm sure we're constrained. I'm going to delete this. Oh. Delete sketch entity. I can pull this this way. There we go. That's going to take a second while it regenerates all that work. So hold on. With any luck, we will not break everything. So this curly Q means it's thinking, this little spinning dot. That looks a little chunkier. Let's try and shell it now. Oh, I'm going to delete this shell. Delete. So we're in a shell, pick up that surface, drop the size down so it's a little smaller. Oh, I thought who? Face to extrude one. Let's go a little smaller. And it still doesn't want to shell. So here's one where I actually where I succeeded. So my geometry in this case was a circle with a bid fillet. There. So let's see if I can fix this guy. I'm going to try to make the coils a little bit less tight. So let's make this half as far. And see if that fixed it. So these can be very finicky. Oh, and now it shelled properly. So it's just that those are too steep. So there is sort of a coiled, neat shape. The simpler this these wings, the easier it is. The other thing we can do is this, and this might break everything, is instead of doing a straight cylinder, we can do with a draft angle. So this would widen out by, let's do I don't know, five degrees. And everything should regenerate. We might have to fix the helix, but thankfully, because of the timelines, nope, it all fixed itself. So it starts at one size and it gets wider as it goes up along with the spiral. So this is a really neat shape, really complex, something really hard to make without 3D printing and 3D modeling.